The formation of complex ions is something that affects the solubility of slightly soluble solids. For example, silver chloride is insoluble in water. It has a KSP of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10th, but it dissolves in aqueous ammonia much better. We could write the equilibrium expression for silver chloride. Silver chloride will dissociate into silver ions and chloride anions. The KSP is the solubility product constant for the dissociation of that silver chloride. If we have silver ions in solution and we put ammonia in there, the silver ions will react with the ammonia and tie them up in the formation of this new complex ion, the silver ammonia complex ion. We can look up a K sub F for forming a complex ion. K sub F is called the formation constant. You have a chart where you have formation constants and something called instability constants that will be useful in this section. So forming a complex ion essentially removes the silver ion from solution. And then by removing that silver ion, you shift the position of equilibrium to the right towards those aqueous ions, the aqueous silver ions and aqueous chloride ions, and therefore increase the solubility because you're moving away from the solid silver chloride. So we have two moles of ammonia that will essentially pair up with each one mole of a silver ion. And there's no way that you could know that two moles go with one silver, but you would see that from the formation of that complex ion and what's listed on the chart. So the Aqueous silver ion would essentially be our Lewis acid because it's going to be accepting lone pairs of electrons from the ammonia, which would be the Lewis base. So the lone pair of electrons on the ammonia will attack the silver ion and form a new coordinate covalent bond between them. And then we form that complex ion where we have silver bonded to two ammonia molecules. And we had silver that had a plus one charge, so now this total complex has a plus one charge. So by forming a complex ion, you will end up increasing the solubility of your slightly soluble salt. The formation constant, K sub F, is also called the stability constant. Having a large value for the K sub F means that the complex ion formation is very stable in its favor. You might also see on your formation chart K sub I, which is known as the instability constant. The instability constant is just the inverse of the formation constant. We really won't use the instability constant very much. The solubility of an ionic compound is increased by the presence of a Lewis base that can form a complex ion. So anytime you can form a complex ion with any of these slightly soluble salts, you're going to be increasing the solubility of them, allowing more of that to be dissolved in solution. When a complex ion forms in solution, we want to write the overall equation. So we're going to start by writing the dissociation of our slightly soluble solid. So for example, if we have silver chloride, we know that that's going to break up into aqueous silver ions and aqueous chloride ions. We could look up the KSP value off of our chart for our silver chloride, and that would be 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10th. And from our formation and instability chart, we can see that silver ion is going to pair up with ammonia to form a complex ion. So now we're imagining that we have silver chloride solid not dissolved in pure water, but dissolved instead in something like ammonia. So the equation for forming that complex ion is that aqueous silver ions pair up with two ammonia molecules and form our complex ion, Ag NH3 2 plus, and that would be an aqueous complex ion. The equilibrium constant, or the K, for this equation is going to be the K sub F, the formation of that complex ion. And from our chart, that equals 1.6 times 10 to the positive seventh. 
Now, when we want to write the overall equation for this process happening, we're going to essentially add up these two equations. And we can cancel things that are on the left and the right that are the same. So you can see that you have silver ions on the left and silver ions on the right, and they both have the same coefficient out front. So those will essentially cancel. So our overall equation will be solid silver chloride plus 2NH3 forming chloride ion plus our complex ion. And to calculate our new K value for our equation that we added up, K will equal the KSP times the KF. When we add equations together, we want to multiply their individual equilibrium constants. So our new K value comes out to being 2.88 times 10 to the negative third when we multiply those two values together. Next, we can write the equilibrium expression for our new overall equation. Our new big K value that we just calculated will equal our chloride ion concentration times our complex ion concentration all over the concentration of our ammonia. And we have to square the concentration of our ammonia as well because there is a coefficient of 2 out in front. Also recall that we do not include the silver chloride in our equilibrium expression because that is a pure solid. The K value is much bigger than the KSP. And that means that the equilibrium lies far to the right. The formation of that complex ion is favored, removing the silver ion from the solution. So essentially, it increases the solubility of our slightly soluble solid. On the graph below, we can see how as the concentration of ammonia increases, the solubility of silver chloride also increases. So Right here we have essentially pure water, and the solubility of silver chloride is relatively low. But if we dissolve it in ammonia, we start forming that complex ion. And then it exponentially increases. That solubility goes up due to forming that complex ion and the equilibrium being shifted to the right according to Le Chatelier's principle. So now let's solve a math type problem involving complex ions. What is the molar solubility of silver chloride in 3 molar ammonia at 25 degrees Celsius? So notice we're not dissolving our silver chloride in pure water. We're dissolving it in a solution of ammonia. So when you look at that formation chart, you want to see if either the silver ion or the chloride ion can form a complex with ammonia. So first we're going to want to write our equation for the dissociation of our salt, our silver chloride. That's going to break up slightly into silver ions and chloride ions. And we can look up the KSP for this process off of our KSP chart. This is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10th. And then once we look at our formation chart, the second chart, we can see that silver ions will pair up and form a complex with the ammonia molecules. So that's going to be our second equation that we have to write. We're going to have silver ions plus 2 moles of NH3 forming our complex ion. And the K value for that, our formation constant of that complex ion, will be 1.6 times 10 to the positive 7th. After you write your two equations, you want to add them together and multiply the equilibrium constants. In this case, our two silver ions end up canceling out because we have one on the right-hand side of the arrows and one on the left-hand side of the arrows. We're left with AgCl, which is a solid, plus 2NH3, that's aqueous, forming chloride ion and our complex. Our new K, our new equilibrium constant, when we multiply KSP times the K sub F, comes out to being 2.88 times 10 to the negative third. So it's not so small anymore that we've multiplied them. And from here, we could actually make an ice table in order to figure out 
what our values are going to be in our equilibrium expression. So remember, we're going to ignore the silver chloride since that's a solid, a pure solid that doesn't get included anyways. We can plug in our initial concentration of the ammonia. We were told in the problem it was three molar, so we're gonna plug in three here. And we'll say that initially we have zero for the chloride and zero for the complex ion. Some of the ammonia is gonna get tied up and go away. It's gonna go down by minus two X. You have that two out in front of the NH3. Chloride will form by plus X, and the complex will also form by plus X. So our equilibrium line ends up being three minus two X for the ammonia, X for the chloride, and X for the complex ion. Next, we can write our equilibrium expression for this new overall equation. We're going to have K is equal to concentration of chloride times the concentration of the complex ion in the numerator, all over the concentration of ammonia, and we have to square that concentration as well. So now that we have our equilibrium line from our ice table, we know that those are the things that we can plug right into our equilibrium expression that we just wrote. Next, let's substitute everything in. Our new K value we calculated was 2.88 times 10 to the negative third. We had X for the chloride, X for the complex ion, all over three minus two X for the ammonia, and then we had to square that. Also notice now the value for our new K that we calculated is only to the minus third. So it's a lot bigger than we're used to. It's not so small that we can technically ignore the minus 2x term. So we're going to leave that there since we have a new value of k that's not as small as we've been working with lately. So we can do a couple tricks, though, to still help simplifying this. We can write the numerator as x squared over 3 minus 2x squared. And then we could actually pull out that squared term since we have it on the top and the bottom. So we're going to reduce this down to being x over 3 minus 2x, and it's that whole thing squared. And so now we could essentially take the square root of both sides of our equation to start solving for x. If we square root this whole term, that'll get rid of our square, but then we'd have to square root the k value, our 2.88 times 10 to the minus third. When we take the square root of that, we end up getting 5.37 times 10 to the negative 2, and that'll be equal to x over 3 minus 2x. So now this becomes relatively straightforward to solve without using the quadratic equation or anything. So we would rewrite this by saying we have 3 minus 2x times 5.37 times 10 to the negative 2. That's equal to x to get that out of our denominator. And then we would have to distribute that term through to the 2x and distribute it through to the 3. So this becomes 0.161 minus 0.107x is equal to x. And then we're going to move our x terms to the same side. So we get 0 0.161 is equal to 1.0. 107x. And then finally, x is equal to 0.145. And that's the molarity. So x is actually equal to our molar solubility because x is equal to a, something that has a coefficient of 1 out front. So we could write this as being equal to our AgCl solid concentration or our molar solubility. Calculate the molar solubility of copper 2 hydroxide in 0.1 molar ammonia at 25 degrees Celsius. The KSP of copper 2 hydroxide is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 20th. So first we're going to write our dissociation for our solid, which is the copper 2 hydroxide. So breaking that up into its ions. It's going to dissociate into copper 2 plus ions plus two hydroxide ions. Our KSP 
is equal to 4.8 times 10 to the negative 20th. And then since we're in ammonia, the copper ion must form a complex with ammonia. In order to figure out how many molecules of ammonia our copper ion will combine with, we need to use our formation chart. So on our formation chart, we can see that the copper 2 plus ion will combine with four moles of aqueous ammonia to form a complex ion, Cu NH3 4 2 plus. And that complex ion will be aqueous as well. And we also need the formation constant off our chart for that process, which is 1.1 times 10 to the positive 13th. So then when we add these together, we can see that our copper will cancel out. And what we'll be left with for our overall equation will be our solid copper hydroxide plus 4 moles of the ammonia. giving us two moles of hydroxide plus our complex ion. Our K value for this process is equal to 5.28 times 10 to the negative seventh when we multiply the Ks he times the K sub F. Next, we could set up an ice table. We can ignore the solid copper hydroxide. Our initial concentration of our ammonia we were given was 0.1 molar. So we're gonna have 0.1. And for our hydroxide, we'll plug in zero. And for our complex ion, we'll plug in zero. Our ammonia then will be 0.1 minus 4x due to there being a coefficient of four out in front. We're going to have plus 2x for the hydroxide. And we're going to have plus x for the complex ion. Our equilibrium line will be 0.1 minus 4x, 2x, and x. Next, we can write our equilibrium expression. Our new K will equal our concentration of hydroxide squared times our concentration of our complex ion over our concentration of ammonia to the fourth power. Our new K value is going to be equal to the one that we calculated, 5.28 times 10 to the negative 7. Next, we can substitute in everything from our equilibrium line into our equilibrium expression. For our hydroxide concentration, we had 2x, and that's going to be squared. Our complex ion was just x over our concentration of ammonia, which is 0.1 minus 4x to the fourth power. Notice that our k value that we calculated this time is relatively small, 10 to the negative seventh. So that means that we can ignore this minus 4x term. Each problem is going to be different depending upon what complex ion you form. If you could end up ignoring x's that are the added or subtract in the, in the denominator or not, essentially. So we don't want to ignore the fourth power or squared, but we can ignore that minus 4x that's being subtracted. So what that reduces down to then is 2x squared times x all over 0.1 to the fourth power is equal to 5.28 times 10 to the negative 7. And we can say the numerator will become 4x cubed all over 1 times 10 to the negative fourth power when we square 0.1. We want to solve for x to get our molar solubility. So what we're going to end up with is 4x cubed is equal to 5.28 times 10 to the negative 11. And then we'll divide both sides by 4 to get x cubed is equal to 1.32 times 10 to the minus 11th. And we want to cube root both sides to give us x, which comes out to being 2.36 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. And so x is going to be equal to our molar solubility of our copper 2 hydroxide. So essentially, it's how many moles of copper 2 hydroxide 
will dissolve per liter of solution. And by dissolving it in ammonia, we can get the molar solubility to increase compared to what it would be in pure water.